the pistol, the shotgun, the nail gun, the rail cannon, and the rocket launcher. These are the weapons of the game Ultra Kill, and in my opinion, these are the best guns in FPS weapon history. Actually, no, scratch that. Not just in FPS history, but in gaming history as a whole. No, really, I truly believe this. Because these five weapons are some of the most versatile, fun, and satisfying masterclasses in weapon design I've ever seen, ever. To be exact, there are 12 different weapons and five variants, as well as three fists and your, um, <laughs> your body. It it's a lot. That's basically 20 weapons. And unlike other games, they're actually designed to be used with each other. So none of them are gonna sit in your arsenal collecting dust. So so don't worry, uh, you won't instantly die if you switch off your assault rifle. However, speaking of switching weapons, you know other games uh, have ammo and, and reloading? Well, in this game, there's no ammo. Uh, no ammo, no reloading, only cooldowns for specific gun abilities, and even those require no input. And that is probably the best decision Hakita could have made. <clears throat> now, the pistol is undoubtedly the best gun ever made, and it's also the best weapon in this game, and unlike in other games, I think it's actually the primary. Since it doesn't do as much damage as the other guns, and everything basically beats it, its value really comes from its reliability, especially while moving and jumping across the arena. And it's also really good at every single range. So it'll basically be your default weapon, something that you'll always switch back to. Seriously, imagine if Ultra Kill was played like this. Let me explain how these weapons are used. They're all used as combo tools. You use pistols at long range, shotguns at short range, nail guns for shredding health constantly and consistently, rail cannon for shredding health inconsistently but instantly, and the rocket launcher for, uh, well I mean, uh, they're not really used for damage, but, but we'll get to that in a second. That's why the pistol is the default. You use it until you see an opportunity to combo it with a shotgun and switch it back. And then you use the rail cannon and you switch it back and then you go back to the shotgun. However, this role can easily be fulfilled by the shotgun and the nail gun, uh, uh, well I mean, <laughs> Not really the nail gun, uh, but, but, but like. However, if you're new here, let me give you a quick rundown on the pistol. Since I've already made a full 15 minute video on it. The marksman has a coin, which is super complex, but um, you can shoot them uh, and you can punch them and you can shoot them, but, but better. It's also really good for chip damage. The piercer has a cool beam and the sharpshooter has a bouncy bullet that goes. It also has an alt version, which basically trades off faster firing speed for a better bullet that does more damage and has a punch to it. So uh, make sure you check out this video after watching this one because the old video kind of sucks. Which means that the first weapon I'm analyzing is the sh- Yes, like Doom, weapons have two variants, but unlike Doom, Ultra Kill is funky and quirky and you can commit horrible, horrible war crimes. The core eject shotgun is simple. Shotgun in the streets, bomb in the sheets. And let me tell you, like in bed, when the bomb gets shot by it until it turns into a nuke, just like at the surface, this is a simple grenade that is super useful for clearing areas. However, when you start punching your own bullets, something, you know, you could also try in real life, it becomes kind of redundant. However, you only need to wait until you get your hands on this puppy, the railgun. <laughs> Switch that over to the Maurice mode and shoot that grenade and... But hey, if nukes aren't your preferred way of killing innocent civilians, then I'm sure a maxed charged pump shotgun that will certainly kill you. I've been uh, advised to remove this this year. The pump charged shotgun is really good, especially if you don't know how to shotgun swap. It shoots faster, but more importantly, you can charge it. One charge makes you do slightly under double your damage. The second, more than double your damage. And the third? Uh, well, I mean, you're already in hell, so you might as well- Sure, you can take this mechanic and treat it as a punishment for not, you know, caring enough to <laughs> comprehend your inputs. But let's be honest, you're playing Ultra Kill, and if you dash at just the right moment, well, you basically get an explosive fart because everything in a nearby radius will stop existing. Granted, you can use this as movement as well, and granted, it might also kill you, but damn, is it effective. But, I mean, you know, there's a lot of mechanics. How many of them are actually uh, useful? Well, I mean, you didn't ask, but uh, let me let me quickly explain.
I'll keep this quick, but you can move with the shotguns. Spam with the shotguns. Clear entire rooms with the shotgun, and it does very well against bosses. In theory, it does everything better than the pistol, especially at mid to close range, where most of the game takes place. Plus, shotgun punching makes precise explosive damage super easy, so what use does the pistol really have? Well, well, well the answer is that the pistol in practice is super, super useful. Now, the coin is obviously very, very good. It can peak angles for you, give you super easy critical hits, and take down fodder foes by simply throwing a coin in the air and shooting it and praying to God for the best. And guns like the sharpshooter can easily clear out entire rooms of fodder enemies and also the entire health bar of some bosses. Plus, the piercer, which has a really good beam, acts as the electric rail cannon just without a massive charge up. However, the pistol does have a weakness. When you run out of coins or when you're too lazy to wait for that alternative pistol reload, you can simply pull out the shotgun and, well, shotgun punch. Or punch and use the shotgun, or shotgun swap. There's a lot of stuff the shotgun can do without even using its alternate ability. Plus, it's a super easy way to get rid of massive enemies like the Cerberus or the Sword Machine, which the pistol does generally struggle against. And that's why the shotgun fits so well into the pistol combo. It's not an afterthought. It's just as, if not slightly more important than the pistol in the endgame. Plus, that's only two guns. Imagine the potential you know, if we add some more- Okay, let me be flat. The nail gun is kind of useless in a good fight. I mean, it goes really well against, uh, big enemies, but I mean, it really gets outclassed in everything. Okay, let me quickly explain. Uh, how do I explain this? Uh, uh, right, with the human reproductive system. The shotgun is- <laughs> The shotgun is like the, the thrusting, the, the pre- I, I need to get a job. And the pistol is like the climax, the weapon you use to finish. And, and sometimes you finish uh, a little too early, but uh, but that's normal. And the nail gun is the pre-game, the pistol round, if you will. Uh, it, I need to get a job. Now, traps, mind you, are very very powerful. Firstly, let's talk about the nail gun. The base nail gun has a magnet and you can use it to make bombs. Bombs that explode and bombs that can implode inside of someone. And it's very, very good. It screws over bosses and it can actually tear out an entire room. Set it up and it will play the game for you. Its alternative form is, is something I, I like to pull out every once in a while to get, you know, to get some cheap certified damage. But in the grand scheme of weapons, it's, it's basically a paperweight. However, if you shoot some water with electricity and dance on the dead body of Sisyphus, I'm sure this isn't going to end badly, you can pick up this baby, the saw blade launcher thing. It's basically the nail gun, but like it's cooler and bigger and it gets me harder, so I, I like it more. And the overheat nail gun actually has a use now because it's spicy and does a lot of damage. And it's also really cool. Um, you know, the nail gun really is the weakest ultra kill weapon. I'll be real. This weapon fills no niche. And the the things it fills, other things feel better. <laughs> That's why I like men. men the subscribe button uh, please comment uh, algorithm uh, and, and like but more importantly uh, have you ever seen a youtuber so funny and uh, funny well then you should subscribe uh, please comment though. the algorithm really likes that okay please don't leave the video the video is coming back but you know it's better than foreplay <laughs> I, I can't believe that's actually in the script <laughs> fisting the feedbacker can um uh, well, I can fist, but like in real life, you can also, uh, well, well, you can parry a fucking bullet with it. Now, let's say your fists are made out of skin and flesh, and bullets travel at a reasonable speed of 2,000 kilometers an hour. And in a precise scientific terms, I can say that your skin fucking destroys itself when something traveling at about 218 kilometers hits it. Now, this does look bad, I, I know, but remember, at the end of the day, blocking gets you killed, and parrying gets you a big penis. You can parry bullets. <laughs> Hell, if you try enough, you, you can even parry something at the speed of light, like lasers and, and punches. It's really, really useful. Like, really useful. If you don't parry, you kind of get, you kind of like just uh, die. But, you know, say you don't like having fun and timing your punches, that's... That's fine. You're weird, but no, okay. Say you kind of just, you know, you want to punch some stuff really high, hard. Well, well, Ultra Kill lets you punch stuff 
just like a hundred times better because it's it's ultra kill because it allows your your fists to, to blow stuff fisting plus blowing this sounds like a good night to me oh my god i need it the knuckle duster explodes it knocks things back allowing you to combo maurice and it's also bloody cool but if you really want to you know be swag you pull out your fists and, and time it with some coins and butter beam butter boom orbital laser how, how cool is that i love ultra kill oh and it also shuts down sentries uh, i mean you could pull out you know your revolver but um uh, i mean you know now originally i was gonna make another gameplay analysis thing but like uh, i mean look i think we both know why we're here it's not to talk about some pistols or, or some shotguns or all that pussy shit no no it, it, it's because i'm about to talk about them now in case you haven't noticed yet i uh <clears throat> I haven't gotten the best reputation when it comes to talking about the rail gun. I, I mean, rail cannon. Look, I'm gonna be saying this word a lot, and I'm probably gonna screw it up, so, so I apologize in advance. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's called the rail cannon because it lets you rail your enemies. The blue rail cannon is a super accurate single target pierce gun. <laughs> Imagine the piercer. Oh, and just inject some pure Peruvian into that puppy. Pray and prepare for the pure pain in your enemies. Well, I, I mean, they're not gonna feel anything, so I, so I guess it's ethical. Fun fact, did you know that they said that flamethrowers were ethical in uh, World War World, World War II because um, uh, these would burn off all your um. You can reflect it on coins and let it autopilot into your enemy's skull. You can shoot it through a crowd and you can also, well, I mean, have you heard about Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? The red cannon. Uh, you wanna know how I turned a grenade into a nuke? Uh, this is how. Eject a core and, well, pull out this guy. And before it hits the ground, you need to shoot it. But it also does the same amount of damage as the electric railgun, just without the sweep PS, and I'm pretty sure it can't reflect off coins, so that's gotta be a negative too. So yeah, however, it's really good at clearing out large areas, so even though it's probably one of the less used rail cannons in the game, I still think it's very, very good. Something that the shotgun punching strap cannot claim. That's a joke, that's a joke by the way, that's a joke. The green rail cannon is, um, is a gun that, uh, yeah, only affects one enemy it can't pierce and it it doesn't have an aoe explosion but like i mean bosses are really only just one guy so it's not it's not actually bad bad guys i i pro okay it's a crush i mean when you're fighting minos and sisyphus you deserve a crutch right look the bleed and and the dot is is really good if you hit a screwdriver, you can basically stop paying attention for a couple seconds because you'll never run out of health. And in group scenarios, you can use it to focus on big opponents, like a hideous mass in the cyber grind. I understand the community's complaints that this is, you know, not the best rail cannon, but like, I don't need to finish off a boss, I need to not get finished by a boss. So, so yeah, um, uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Look, here's the conclusion. This gun is really really good. It's arguably the ultimate of this game. You have to charge it and if you know that you're gonna throw it and, and you throw it, uh, it's bad. But if it hits, boy does it hit. I could go on about this weapon for hours, but at the end of the day, it does something that, well, it does something an ult should. It's specific but can be used in a lot of scenarios. It's something that you have to work for and it ends up being worth its cost, that being the time of its weight. This means that while it's really, really good, it's not OP. It does the piercer, shotgun punching, and shotgun punch, shotgun swap punch, shotgun punch, shotgun strat better with the electric, malicious, and screwdriver rail cannons respectively, but not by much. Unlike games where your ultimate needs kills and stuff, the wait time is not that bad of a negative, and that really makes it just a deterrent from spamming or relying on it. So really, use it as a better starting, sustaining, or finishing tool. Hey, hey, look, that's perfect. Start with an AoE blast from the malicious rail cannon or the screwdriver, sustain with the screwdriver, and finish with the electric rail cannon. Oh my god, I love ultra kill. Again, it's 
versatile and powerful. And I hope that that's been inserted into your head because I'm about to go into P2 again and make some analysis. I switch back to the marksman and shotgun swapping, uh, occasionally punching for health on hit. Simple ultra kill gaming, however I need to handle that mind flare so I toss a screwdriver at it and start to spam it out with shotguns and punches, timing them in and out so I don't punch my own bullets and get sent to the shadow realm. When one of them dies I go to the other one and you may have noticed some parrying and some slamming in between. What do I do with the last mind flare? Well I felt a little quirky and pulled out the overheat nail gun and shredded it like roast chicken. Now let's compare that to the arsenal in CSGO. <laughs> Alright, I pulled out the AK. Uh, also, I know this is a bot lobby. I didn't want to go into a full game for footage. Uh, I get comfy in the corner, and when someone enters my crosshair, I shoot them. And another, and uh, another. <laughs> sure, you might pull out your pistol when you have no ammo left, but generally the AR is on top. Now that's fine. CSGO is the most popular game on Steam for a reason, and that's because it's really, you know, really fun. But I think Ultra Kill handles its weapons better. Plus, tactical shooters makes me actually want to question what my life is purpose is. I should quickly mention you can also damage enemies with a slam. Uh, that hurts them a little bit, but it's like, just like, sh fucking shoot them. Alright, uh, you remember the weapon that I said was really useful, but it did not do, like, much damage at all? I think it's about time that I mentioned that. Now, in truth, the rocket launcher is a, a mid-weapon, alright? It, it does pretty alright damage, but it fills no niche and the bullets are very slow. Sure, you can do more damage to airborne characters, but anything that can go airborne in this game dies in two hits from a pistol anyway, so, so what's the point? Look, there's just a better way to handle things. Jump fire rocket and click the right click button aim it at a good direction and click the right click button again and oh this is exactly what it, you think it is do you like fortnite i'll be real i've never played it but rocket riding is now a one-man endeavor so if you uh get no play uh no bitches and no friends it's perfect flying yeah flying's pretty useful if you don't have it, then you're losing out on some of the best strats and arenas in Ultra Kill. I've already talked at length about the Leviathan, but I mean, if you want to play the Cyber Grind, you're going to need this too. You can literally leave the arena and just chill in the underground for a bit. And if you get knocked off, you're not going to die instantly. It's really, really epic. Now, the Cannonball is alright as well. It's another big fuck off damage projectile, but I heard it's good against hideous masses and it's cool. I, I love big balls and you can parry it, so it's it's very epic. But, but like, like, come on, this one's called the freeze frame. It can be like Joe in the hit show Joe Joe's Bizarre Adventure. The way you're the same stand as Star Platinum because you you can uh because because you can freeze stuff in the, in the air and kill people with instant. Where am I going with this fucking bit? Look, I think uh I think we both. Think. I also think rocket riding is cool, like any other reasonable person. Uh, it's, it's rocket riding. And while rocket jumping is ass in this game, I, I think it's alright, because you travel at the speed of light anyway. It, it is what. And, uh, that's, that's it. That's all the weapons. Uh, in the background, I'm playing a clip where I'm using everything. It's a lot to explain, and this video is very, very long already, but I, I think this clip speaks more than I ever could. Thanks for watching, uh, so much. I, I really do hope you enjoyed. This has been quite a long video, but I, I think it's pretty good. Please do comment, uh, or subscribe, or like, and, uh, well, uh, see you in a week, probably. Bye-bye.